So what do you call yourself? Welcome. Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Hey. Hey, what can I do for you this fine day? This is your destiny. Hot, hot, hot. Right now. Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Kick it. Come on in and enjoy yourself. Right now. We gon' party like no one else. My mic sounds nice, nice. What about yours? Uh, microphone check, one, two. Microphone okay, check, okay. one, two. And to my left, to my left. Microphone check. Okay, just making sure that I'm in the right place at the right time with the right folks. I got Harold. I got James. Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. Just making sure. Welcome to another episode of the Latangela Show podcast. You never know who's going to be in the hot seat or on the tan line, but one thing is for sure. I have questions that need answers. You know, the other day I'm out and about and I had the opportunity to meet Mr. Harold Greer. Um, you know, just letting the Lord align my steps. Right. And when it comes down to this podcast, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be able to serve as a vessel to allow people a platform to share their story and their voice. And so we can find solutions. We come up with answers. We solve issues that are facing us personally facing us as a community and you know we were just talking and and now I have my friend Mr. James Metcalf with us as well because it is a family affair so when we're talking about second chances dear life dear life sometimes good people get caught up in not so good situations but that's not the beginning to the end all um with your test that is now a testimony i like to hear from you in your words and of course i'm gonna kick it off with you mr greer well first of all i'd like to just uh thank you latangela for just giving us the opportunity uh just to be here today and just to express you know what god has done in our lives yeah and and just uh to talk about how grateful we are to some people that gave us a second chance, you know, coming out from where we came from, out of yeah. the prison environment into this free society. Absolutely. And, you know, so many people have their conclusions that they'll draw, right? And it's on so many different sides of the story and the spectrum. It just varies. Um, tell us a little bit about your story. Well, my story, uh, well, the end of the old me began in 1993 when I was convicted of armed robbery and attempt first degree murder. Me and my uh, younger brother, we got caught up in a situation to whereas the end of it wind up costing me uh, my life as I knew it at that particular time into uh, getting a sentence that exceeded 149 years. Whoa, 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 whoa. I can't just let you skip past that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like you can't get to a point to where you could just freely wrap your mind around standing in front of a judge that's behind this podium and got this gavel and says 149 years is what you're facing. Like what went through your mind when you heard this? I mean, you stand there in awe of the, the number 149 years. Mm -hmm. That's past a life sentence. Yeah, it is. That's, I mean, you and I both can't do a 149-year sentence right. if you split it up down the middle. So it was numbers that was just unfathomable. Yeah. And when the judge gave me that time, it was like, I'm not going to accept that. I'm not, that's not going to be my truth. And I think in not accepting that reality and not holding to that number, I think that gave me the resiliency along with, you know, the grace of God and, and the strength from God mm -hmm. to survive that. Right. And what did the support system look like for you in that time? I know that this was in 1993. This is before, before social media and a hashtag and a retweet or people really being abreast to what's going on with the case or to even know step by step. But 149 years to now sitting here across from me talking as a free man. Like, how, how did we get there? Well, I can tell you when I had the 149 years, I, I basically got kind of ostracized mm -hmm. from society, from my friends. Because, I mean, 
they were helpless at that particular time. And to see a friend, a family member, or, you know, just somebody that they loved be cast away, yeah. you know, into, you know, what, what I always allude to, the garbage can that society casts people to, human beings to, you know, that's called a prison. Yeah. And, you know, it's just that God kept me throughout that thing. God showed me his favor throughout my, my, my sentence. And it was just amazing to watch how you can go, just like with Job, you know, from hmm. having a world that you know as a world to mm-hmm. having everything just taken away from you. Yeah. And then for God just to redeem you, you know, to, 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 to a beautiful life that I live today. Absolutely. And, you know, for them to tell you 149 years, how many of those years did you actually serve? Well, I actually served 22 and a half years. Of Which is sentence. still a lifetime. Yes. It is. That is still a lifetime. Um, And when you talk about the change, things changed a lot from 1993 to that 22 year time span. What was one of the biggest adjustments for you in in coming home and seeing the light of day? Well, when I came home, well, before I left, there were no Internet. I mean, they had cell phones, but it was the old time cell phones that you carry in a big old case. Right. Right. (laughs) You know, I mean, cell phones were just being introduced. And it's just the technology and the advancements of technology that, you know, I still, I mean, I've been home seven years now Mm -hmm. and I still am amazed by, you know, the new technology that I haven't even gotten abreast to. Absolutely. And, you know, we talk about um, the rehabilitation, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Here in Louisiana, it's no secret that The reentry program is something that we always want to harp on. We need to because as you leave those concrete cell walls and you're reentering into society, you want to be able to thrive. You want to be able to compete. You want to be able to sustain um, without falling back into the traps, Mm -hmm. right, without going back into the trenches. And we know what that door looks like. It's a revolving door. Mm -hmm. And to prevent from that happening, what are some of the steps that you had to take while behind the bars to make sure that you were rehabilitating well just like you're saying behind the bars re-entry starts behind the bars it takes a mindset to say well behind the bars I don't like the person that I look at in the mirror every day Mm -hmm. so what will I do about it and when you take that initiative Mm -hmm. to change in that particular moment then you begin to seek out rehabilitative you know steps and efforts whether it's education whether it's uh, just getting uh, mental health, you know, uh, thinking for a change, uh, parenting skills, right. things that you may not have even thought about when you were in, before you were incarcerated. Mm-hmm. And then you start taking these programs and developing, you know, what they call self-help programs first right. to take care of self. And then you start participating in educational programs, training programs to, to prepare you for outside as best as you can to give you a certain skill set so when you can hit the ground you can be employable yeah rather than to be helpless and just needing a hand out you you don't look for a handout because it's very few places that will give you a handout true but people will always you know it's just the heart of good people good people will always give you a hand up absolutely you know and, you know, Mr. Greer, knowing that you were facing 149 years with over 22 of those years served, being home for seven years, um, that is definitely a test that is now a testimony. And I have more questions that will need answers from you. But, you know, I, I, I want to shift now with Mr. James Metcalf. How you doing? I'm good. Now, where you from, Mr. Metcalf? Because you're act- the first Metcalf I've ever met. Well, I'm acting from Arkansas. <laughs> okay, Arkansas. Yes. Welcome on down to Louisiana. What brought you here? Well, actually, Mr. Greer brought me here. Okay. <laughs> I met Mr. Grill in prison, and we became brothers, you know. And when I got ready to make parole, he offered me, you know, a place to come and start over again. Yeah. Which was great because after being gone as long as I was, I really didn't have a past. And I'm very thankful, but, you know, that's how God was. It is. You know. And I have to say, I agree with him that when you're in prison, you can either look at it in a bad way or a good way. And what I mean by that, no one wants to be locked up. True. But you can take that time and use it in a positive way. And 
the first step of that is surround yourself with positive people that feed you positive things. Mm -hmm. And from my observation, uh, my view of life, godly people are the best positive spirits that you can have in your life. Yeah, because yeah. Even in the midst of things, they still motivate you to do better and to go on. Right. You know, Mr. Metcalf, you just mentioned something saying that where you come from, where you come from and you spend as much time as you did. We'll jump into that in a second. But you said you really didn't have a past. Do you know how long somebody has to be gone in order for them not to have had a past? Yes. You know, um, tell me a little bit about the situation that led you behind bars. How many years were you facing and how many did you serve? Right. First, my action started. I committed an aggravated robbery. Mm -hmm. I was had a girlfriend, one child, and she was pregnant with a child. Mm -hmm. And I, actually, at the time, I was working two jobs. I got laid off for of one, and I got fired off the other one. And it was around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. So me being raised that a man is supposed to take care of his family, I went out and committed a robbery. Wow. And when I did that, it started a chain of events, which led me to prison. Yeah. I was actually sentenced to 18 years of prison in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And I was doing the time. I had made trustee. I was actually at the Law Enforcement Training Academy. Okay. And my son's mother took my son from my mother, which she had him at the time. And that child, a child started another chain reaction, which made me escape. What? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Time out. You managed to escape. Tell me how. Well, like you were in the trustee program, right? And you slipped away. Was it a manhunt? Like, what what chain of events did that turn into? Well, actually, uh, the security guard at night, me and him, was, we had a real good relationship. Mm -hmm. So, I was able to get to him and tie him up and get the guns out the armory and take his truck. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. So, I mean, you talking about a real chain of events? You didn't just walk out of there, right? <laughs> and. That led to me being chased into the state of Louisiana. Okay. And by them on the lookout for us, when this off-duty police officer, as a matter of fact, he was getting off work from the night before, and we actually passed each other. I stopped and he stopped. Mm -hmm. And when I recognized that it was a police officer, I took off. He took off behind me. And at that point, I had a guy with me, which was my file partner. They both started to shoot until we chased and wound up having a wreck. At that point, we was arrested. Oh, wow. All right. And when we was arrested, uh, you could imagine it didn't turn out too good for us after that. I you know? mean, I can imagine. So you started off with 18 years, <laughs> right. and then you worked your way into a trusted situation. But after that, yeah. surely, surely they said uh, this 18 year has to be Revisited along with extra. What did that come to? Okay, but well, that came to first. We was transported back to Arkansas, which we received two hundred and ten years. Whoa, 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 whoa! Was come come a little closer to the microphone for I me. Say, I know I time, can't be hearing this right. At this time, we returned to Arkansas and we received two hundred and ten years, which it was actually seven thirty-year sentences running consecutive, mm. meaning that you had to make a roll on each one and start on the next one. How does one manage to be here in the studio chatting as a free man after being faced with 210 years? God. Nothing but. God. Nothing it, but. It's just, you know, and the reason I say that is that at that particular time, I almost gave up. Yeah. You know, I'm really, cause I had 210 years there and I had 75 years in Louisiana. So you talk about a total of 285 years. Look, I, I hadn't been good at math before, but I added that up real quick. Like, wait, wait, wait. You say 210 divided by, and then you add 285 years is what you're facing. And this was for aggravated um, robbery. It was for aggravated robbery, and the charge of Louisiana was attempted first-degree murder of a police officer. Mm -hmm. But, like I say, at one point, mm -hmm. you know, I think I was about 23, maybe just turned 24 at the time. So yeah. you can imagine as a young man feeling that he would never see freedom again. Yeah. It was kind of rough for, mm, this was, I actually got locked up in 1986. The escape happened in 89. So at this time when they sent me back, I was sent to Tucker Mac, which is the worst prison in Arkansas. 
And what's the name of that one? Tucker Max. Okay, now is that equivalent to our Angola? No, it's 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 a lot more secure than that goal. Oh it's wow. Down to oh, I mean, well, they had today. to secure you at this point because I mean, <laughs> you didn't just walk off; you rolled off with these people guns. Like, yeah, I can kind of understand. You understood why right. we had to make that trip, right? Right. Okay. And at this time, I did a lot of time in the cell because, like I said, you was locked down for 23 hours a day. You only oh, wow. You only an hour out to exercise or to shower or whatever. Hold on, Mr. James. Before we move on from that, I want you to walk the average listener or that teenager right now that's on the other end because we're all just one bad decision away. You know what I'm saying? We're all just one bad decision away. We can live on our rock, our holier than thou. We are all one bad decision away. But to hear someone say, I spent 23 hours in a cell with nothing but my thoughts, with nothing but this concrete surrounding me, what does that do to a person's mental state? Like, I, I, I don't understand... During the pandemic, that was the most time that I spent with myself, right? It was quiet and the silence got loud for me, but I could still open the door and walk out and go about life freely. But even with that amount of solitude, we all felt an impact. So for those who are one decision away and you really want to just say, look, man, this is what you would be facing if it's 23 hours in this concrete hotel. I would tell this freedom is one of the most precious things you could ever have. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you're in a cell or you got five miles to run around. You have boundaries. Yeah. And your freedom is the freedom to make your choices mm-hmm. and not allow someone else to make them. So you have to always think about situations or circumstances you might place yourself in because one mistake could take you 37 years to get back to having your freedom. Yeah, one bad mistake can cost you 285 years. Right. You know, and knowing that you met and and received a friend and a brother in Christ and Mr. Harold, what does that do for the relationship, for the bond that you two share? Not only did you share it in that space, but now on the other side of it, knowing that it's still um, an adjustment. It's still a situation that you're dealing every single day, removing those stigmas, um, having the transparency to share your story. What does that do for the bond that both of you share? Well, this... It's a bond that I don't think a lot of people realize. Because see, when you've been through things, through trials and tribulations, yes, and you never let that person down, you always gave your all. If you had one suit, you split it. Yeah. And it was never any bad feeling. Uh, if <laughs> you see him in need, you automatically, he don't have to ask. Yeah. You automatic death. See, that is real closeness. That is real unity. And I feel it like... That's something that the community really needs because with unity is love. And where you got love, there's no hurt and there's no pain. Now, I love all of that. And knowing that you all were facing so many years, but you knew that your heart had changed. You knew that um, you could re-enter society and be a beacon of light and show them what redemption really looks like on the other side of saying, I want to re-enter society to be a key factor, a change agent um, for those who really just want to seek the help. For those who say, I, I believe that this time I spent, because you've spent over half your lives. You know what I'm saying? That, that's a very long time. Um, how, how many? 50 plus years. 50, 50 plus years collectively. Mm-hmm. Um, for those who are going through it right now, what advice would you give them for next step in rehabilitation and hopefully reentry as well? Well, the biggest thing that I, I uh, implore my brothers and sisters that's behind bars right now is to really look at yourself, evaluate the things that you have to change in your life and take it serious. Yeah. Because nobody's going to love you outside of God more than you love yourself. Absolutely. So step up, shake off whatever, you know, bad vibes you have, Mm -hmm. and start improving yourself. It's a day-by-day step, one step at a time. Improve yourself to make you feel better about who you are. Right. Because you you can't sell yourself to somebody unless you're true to yourself. Yeah. You know, because... People see through the foolishness. <laughs> Smoke and mirrors. So, 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 so if you're real about yourself and real about changing yourself and change yourself, then people are going to see it. I mean, the word of God says your gift will make room for you. It will. So find that gift. Find that gift within yeah. yourself. 
you know, ask God to lead you down the right path, you know, to, to, to become the man or woman that he chose you to be. Right. Because right. he chose you. He gave you a gift. Find that gift. Develop that gift. And I promise you, God is going to see you through. He is, as he always does, right? Yes. And I know that you all are active, you're vocal, and you are the change agents and the beacon of lights. Um, if those who are looking for that brotherhood and that safe space to just share their testimony or to even say that they want to gather and speak to younger kids to say, listen, man, look, summertime months, and you know what we're facing here in Baton Rouge. We know what the crime rate looks like, right? And this is a part of my accountability. This is just a platform that God allows me to use in this season for how however many seasons he grants but I want to be responsible with that and I want to make sure that we're bringing the resources and the right people to the solutions um, how can we get in touch to say if we need a guest speaker to come out and speak to our children if we want you to come out and be a part of the program how do we contact you okay with me myself Harold Greer you can contact me by my name Harold H-A-R-O-L-D Greer G-R-I-E-R the number seven zero at yahoo.com Love it. And with me, same way with my email, jmetcalflpp at gmail.com. And anytime, you know, if you need me to come and talk, speak, even if you need me to help, come do some work, you know, I'm there. You I know, love it. An example to be honest is to show them that it's good to work and help the community. If you make your community better, it's going to make everybody healthy. That's it, you know, and I just want to say thank you for all of the hard work and dedication that you all have put in to make sure that the word is getting out and that you're making the community stronger one block at a time. And I want you to think of this as an extension of your office. So as you have things that's going on, you pull up on me and say, hey, Tan, I need to jump in the hot seat on the Tan line. It's done. If I got a mic, you got a mic. I got a platform, you got a platform. It's important that we let God do his work and we don't get in the way. We got to get out of our own way. And then one last thing, uh, to, to sign off for myself I just want to again Thank you Latangela And I thank God for you thank Because you so I'll see you in the community I see you thank In you. the community Doing what God You know Called you to do Thank and you And it's just been a pleasure to, to be in your show And your podcast And anytime I appreciate you more than you know And, and I, I say the same thing You know People like you Are precious jewels Thank you the heart that you have that's all been the hearts that have helped us all our life. And it's important that people recognize and appreciate that because you need all the help that you can get so you can endure the help of us. Right. Man, that means more than both of you know. I promise you that. And God has his way of sending what you need when you need it most. Amen. And he sent that through both of you for me today, and I appreciate you so much. So we got more work to do. I'm going to let you chase the sun or let the sun chase you. But either way, get after it. I love you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Peace. <laughs>